this slab is about staining. It is our lab tree that we would normally do in our laboratory practical rooms at either of the campuses that you belong to. This particular staining exercise is done basic, basically to identify cell morphology. It is approximately one and a half hours long within a practical environment in the laboratory setting. However, we are attempting to do a virtual type video setting so that the technique and your abilities based on your theory and knowledge can be linked to understand via video simulations. After completing this exercise, you should be able to describe the major divisions between bacteria. You should also be able to describe and conduct a gram stain procedure. And in addition, you should also be able to use the malachite green stain to look at endospores. It is important to note that bacteria almost have a very similar or if not very closely related refractive index of water. Because of this, viewing bacteria without staining makes it very difficult to observe. They appear as faint gray shapes and are difficult to visualize. This staining method makes microbial cells easier to visualize. There are different types of stains. Simple stains use only one dye that can stain the cell wall of bacteria much like dyeing eggs during your Easter celebrations. Differential stains use two or more stains or dyes and this can be used to categorize cells into groups. Both staining techniques allow the detection of cell morphology or sheep, but the differential stain provides additional information concerning the cell. The most common differential stain used in microbiology is the gram stain. This gram stain uses four different reagents and the results are based on differences in the cell wall of bacteria. Some bacteria have relatively thick cell walls composed primarily of a carbohydrate known as peptidoglycan. Other bacterial cells have thinner cell walls composed of peptidoglycan and lipopolysaccharides. Peptidoglycan is not soluble in organic solvents such as alcohol or acetone, but lipopolysaccharides are nonpolar and will dissolve in nonpolar agent solvents or organic solvents. Crystal violet, which is a dye associated with the gram stain, is the primary staining dye. This stain can also be used as a simple stain because it colors the cell wall of any bacteria. Gram's iodine is another stain that is present in the Gram stain and kit, and it is used as a mordant. This reacts with the crystal violet to make a large crystal that is not easily washed out of the cell. And at this point, all cells will be the same color. The difference in the cell walls is displayed by the use of a decolorizer. This is a solution of acetone and alcohol that's mixed in a proportion and used as droplets onto the cells. The decolorizer does not affect those cell walls composed primarily of peptidoglycan but those with a lipid component will have large holes developing in the cell wall where the lipid 
is dissolved away by the acetone and alcohol. These large holes will allow the crystal violet iodine complex for the mordant to be washed out of the cell, leaving the cell colorless. A counter stain known as saffronin, which is present in your gram staining kit, is applied to the cell which will dye the colorless cells. The cells that retain the primary stain will appear blue or purple and are known as gram positive. Cells that stain with a counter stain will appear pink or red and are known as gram negative. The lipopolysaccharide of the gram negative cell not only account for the staining reaction of the cell but also acts as an endotoxin. Many times the endotoxin is released when the cell dies and it is responsible for the fever and general feeling of malaise that is accompanied from a gram-negative infection caused by certain bacteria. When reporting a gram stain, you must indicate the stain use, the reaction, and the morphology of the cell. Round purple or blue cells would be reported as gram-positive cocci, and rod-shaped purple or blue cells would be reported as gram-positive bacilli. In order to survive, some bacteria produces endospores that are highly resistant to harsh environment conditions. The malachite green staining procedure is a differential staining that is used to distinguish between vegetative cells and endospores. In other words, those cells that are dying and have produced endospores, the malachite green will actually stain those spores that are seen inside of the cell. Now that we know a bit about gram staining, we will now move on to the materials that are required to actually begin the experiment. These are the materials required for the staining lab. This is your gram steam kit. I turn it around. This is a crystal violet dye. Grams iodine. Decolorizer. And our counter steam, which is the saffron. This is our sample of mixed culture containing Staphylococcus aureus and E. coli. Our clear transparent slide. This test tube rack has in it the different types of inoculating instruments. So these would be your inoculating loop that come in different sizes where the, the, the loop bends. So we have three different sizes that would give us three different measurements. We can also use a sterile cotton tip applicator for different types of samples. Seventy percent ethanol required for sterilization of our countertop surfaces. We can also use ten percent bleach. And for any other type of wood that requires a solvent or a solution, we would use distilled water. Our soap is for washing up after the lab. This tray is what we will use as our steaming rack and apparatus. We also require a heating mantle or a Bunsen burner, both of which 
we would be using to demonstrate how we can heat fix microorganisms onto the slide. After the entire staining procedure, the microscope is required for viewing. This oil, emulsion oil, is necessary. It is used at the highest power of 100 times objective lens. We also require a timer, so we have the stopwatch that is need needed for timing precisely for our staining procedure. Sharpie marker is needed for making all the different indications on the slide, like your name and drawing that circle, that region where you would use to smear your sample. This is the malachite green oxalate dye that is required for staining for the endoscope. Dropper that will be used for taking out the dye. This is the Bunsen burner lighter. This is a beaker with water and a tripod stand with gauze. We are about to start the procedure for staining and the very first procedure or instruction is to take your slide and label it. You must write an initial of your name or for the group that you belong to. So I'm going to write the initial for me which is RR and I also want to identify a region on the slide where I will be placing my sample. So I will draw a circle with a sharpie marker that will give me an area in which my sample will be placed. I will allow it to dry and then I will flip the slide to the other end. It is on this surface I will be placing the sample of microorganisms to be steamed. In order to obtain my sample, I must ensure that the loop that I'm going to use is sterile. This is done to ensure that no other contaminant or bacteria or microorganism will enter into my sample. I will now use the Bonson burner and I have to light it. it so that I can get a clean that gives me a blue region. This is my inoculating loop that I would place inside of the flame in a region where it is at its hottest. And you will see that the loop is actually getting red in color. And when we get, get it at this stage, we now know that it is sterile. It has been heat treated and it's sterile. It has no organisms in it. I will now keep my loop close to the flame because the flame is also sterilizing the atmosphere, the air that is around. And I now can take a sample from inside. And I am going to 
smeared onto the surface where my circle is that region where I am spreading thinly as possible my sample of microorganisms. I will now allow it to sit and air dry. We do not blow onto it or fan it because microorganisms are ubiquitous and they are found everywhere. So we do not want to have organisms coming onto the sample as well as we refrain from speaking over the sample because microorganisms that are present in our mouth can also get onto the sample. So we will now wait at least two or three minutes for the sample to air dry. Now that the sample has been air dried, we now require to heat fix the sample so that when the staining procedure starts, the sample is not removed while washing with distilled water. So in order to heat fix, we can use two different methods. We can heat fix on open direct flame, or we can also heat fix on a heating mantle. If I'm using the Bunsen burner flame, I have to be very careful that I do not run the risk of damaging the cells of the bacteria that's on the slide. So it has to be very quickly over, this, over the, the flame, preventing the bacteria from being cooked or the cells being damaged. So I would just pass it in a couple times, just trying to keep That should be it for heat fixing of the bacteria. If I'm using the method of the heating mantle, I will turn the setting on to heat to about 60 degrees Celsius, and I would rest the slide on the surface and I allow it there to heat fix for approximately two to three minutes. Now that the, the sample is ready for staining, we are now going to use the gram staining kit that has been provided to us. We will also now require a stopwatch for timing each step in the gram staining procedure. We have the steams already in an order and each steam requires specific timing for it to work. The first steam that will be used would be the crystal violet that will be placed dropwise to flood the entire area that is the, the circle area that has the heat fixed bacteria. After which it stands for one minute and will be washed off using tap water. Second to that will be the Grams IV that will also follow the same procedure of flooding the area that has the bacteria steam heat fixed for one minute and repeated washing using tap water. This is the decolorizer of acetone and alcohol which we would place for a short period of approximately three seconds. This will allow for the decolorizing of the mordant or the large crystals that were formed when the crystal violet and the Gram's iodine reacted. Recall that in the introduction, I stated that there are two types of compounds found in the cell wall of bacterial cells and the acetone alcohol decolorizer will remove the lipopolysaccharide layers and form large holes. 
because of this, the mordant or that large crystal can now move out of the cell wall of that type of bacteria. Because of that, the cell looks, or the slide looks colorless or clear, as though there, there are no dye present. But a counter stain dye known as safranin is now used for approximately one minute and will also be washed off. That dye will be retained by cells that got those large holes and the mordant or the large purple crystals that were removed. So this procedure is very short. It requires precision and accuracy. And this is why I have asked for assistance and I have a lab technician who would be assisting in the actual staining procedure. Ready? So we are about to commence the staining procedure for ground staining. And we have the order of the stain already in the right locations. And we also have the stopwatch already set at zero. The first dye that is to be used would be the crystal violet. And we now have the lab technician going to demonstrate how to flood it and as I as the drop starts my timer starts for one minute and it's flooded completely in that region where the heat fix organism is one ready? one minute has elapsed and we are now rinsing notice that the lab technician is not allowing the stream of water to flow directly onto the, the dyed surface. It was allowed to just drain from on top and it, the slide was slanted. This is to ensure that the bacteria or the microorganisms present are not washed off. Stopwatch is already set for one minute again and now the, the Grams iodine is going to be used to flood for one minute. Yeah. We're now washing out the iodine using a steam procedure and method for ensuring that the bacteria or microorganisms remain on the slide. Note also that at this point in time, the reaction between Gram's iodine and crystal violet have occurred and in the cell walls should have large crystals that are purple or blue in color. This step involves the decolorizer. It is a very important step. This is the step that allows for the removal of the large crystals formed from the mordant and what is needed is a lot of accuracy and precision because if you stay too long, you can remove a whole lot of the dye. So we would like to ensure that proper technique is performed. And this is the reason why I have a technician with me to perform this task. The decolorizer that we are using has a concentration that allows for us to just perform the task for three seconds. Other decolorizers, dependent on its strength of, of concentration, can go all the way up to 15 seconds. So we will now begin having the technician perform this step of gram staining, which is a decolorizer step. The last step of gram staining requires the counter stain, which is the safranin. The safranin is now going to be placed and flooded onto the surface to allow for coloration of 
bacterial cells. This will be done and timed with the stopwatch for one minute as we begin now. So this completes the staining procedure and we are now going to allow the slide to air dry and we can also assist the drying by using a uh, napkin or any type of uh, paper that will allow for absorption of the water that may be on the back of the slide, the sides of the slide, bearing in mind that we do not pat or try to get any of the, the interior within the circle region contaminated in any way possible. While we are waiting for the ground steam slide to air dry for viewing under the microscope, we will now perform the endospore steam and procedure on a readily prepared air dry and heat fixed slide contain in the microorganism bacillus. I would now ask the lab technician to assist with this staining procedure where the sample is now placed on the rack and a piece of cut paper towel is placed over the bacterial smear. It is now saturated with malachite green steam. The slide is now placed over a beaker that has water steaming. This is done for five minutes, during which added steam is placed to prevent drying out. Our slide is now ready for, for rinsing, and distilled water is now poured over the moistened paper, rinsing it off, and then removing and continue the rinsing. Now that it has been completely rinsed, it is counter stain using saffronin from the ground stain and kit for approximately one minute. One minute will be time using the stopwatch. Begin. Our saffronin is now removed using the distilled water and rinsed off completely. The slide is now placed on a piece of paper towel for absorption of excess moisture and water that is on the under surface and sides and it's allowed to air dry after which it will be used for viewing under the microscope. 